Each of the ancients amazes Your intellectual grass just inspires No spiritual conveyance to testing Your erudition waves from afar But your head's so strong Your heart is blind From the trauma, a safety net from sanctity torn. Invalidation breaking the trust down. The armor building up through the years. Well, hi everyone, this is Arthur and Fiona Christen of Love for Life. A new Love for Life Kindern group has started and we're making a video to be used as an introduction on YouTube, Facebook, our website and elsewhere to provide a general overview of what the Kingdom group is all about, why Kingdom, the attitudes required at Kingdom, the background of the system as to why uh, Kingdom as well. The, um, the, kingdom, the Kingdom dream is a way of life which helps us to get out of the system. Uh, a system of where harm has been done to everybody. Uh, harm that's shown in, in a thousand one ways for all the love for life work that we have been doing. We've created um, a dream of kingdom uh, to provide the simplest, easiest, most peaceful, peacefulest way to cause a mass exodus out of the system uh, with minimal disruption and in a way that allows us to um, work together without creating more conflict, creating more chaos um, over and above what we've already got amongst us today. Um, the other thing about the Kingdom Dream, which we want to sort of mention from the beginning here, is that it's a remedy to the education system we've been given. It's a, it's a, it's a remedy to the way everything has been explained to us um, that has caused such confusion as to what actually is the remedy that's going to help us get out of the system without invalidating the uniqueness and the originality of everyone because we are all unique and original without causing harm and, and a way of life that provides freedom, truth, peace, joy, abundance do no harm, no loss of uniqueness, originality no slaves and rulers for everyone a dream that we're sure that everybody lives for the issue of kingdom or community alternative lifestyles is one where people think that is a pipe dream, that it is utopia, that it's something out of arm's length, out of our reach. And we're here to show you that that ain't the case, that actually we can create kingdom and be seen to be creating kingdom in this life, um, and that all that's required is overcoming doubt and uncertainty that it is doubt and uncertainty that is causing so much grief for, uh, for all of us. One of the biggest obstacles we've realised that there is to Kingdom is that most people don't realise this extent of the brainwashing they've received under the system and through system education, which we've all been you know, um, indoctrinated by. And this is part of what coming together to create a Kingdom is about. It's about learning to recognize all the areas of our lives that we have been brainwashed and have been taught not to have our unique and original thoughts but just to follow the whatever we've been told so this is the important a really important factor because a lot of people think oh great community kingdom sounds fantastic sounds great but they actually want to bring a lot of their system brainwashing with them because they have not yet realized that this is actually not them the unique and original man or woman they are it's actually the stuff they've learned in the system and they're bringing system habits, system thoughts, system ways of life they want to bring that into kingdom and it sounds really harsh to say no you can't be like this, you can't be like that, you can't be like this but as soon as we start bringing the system into kingdom then we have the system again and so this is why we always talk about having kingdom having it in different stages so a stage where lots of us can come together to live together in what we call the mud room where we work through all this stuff and it will be challenging, it will be painful and at times you, everyone will just want to tear their hair out and um, walk away but this is what we all need to do for each other to help each other 
with kindness, with gentleness, with but with confrontation as well, saying, "Look, do you realise what this is? You're bringing this in here. You're bringing that in." And it's and again, this is where the guidelines of do no harm are so important because basically, what our aim is is to just keep gradually chipping away all the areas in our life where we do harm. Obviously, we can't just stop overnight because we're we don't know how to do that yet. But if we keep chipping away, hey, look, this is an area we can actually stop that harmful practice now. We can start doing things a bit differently in a way that doesn't harm. And then, so that's one area covered. Then you move on the next little bit. Okay, now we can stop doing, we've figured out how to do this in our lives that we feel we need, but we don't have to do harm anymore. So the first stage of kingdom is this gradual process of weaning our thinking off the system and weaning the harm out of our lives in how we live every day, practically, day to day. How we, what happens once we get up in the morning, what we're doing and throughout the day, everything that we're doing, that gradually we can stop the harm. It's, in fact, we have been practicing all our lives in the system to become very good slaves. Now we have to learn to practice the skills of what it is to live to be free. This is not a skill that we've learned through school or through the jobs and careers and interests we have in the system. To develop this, Kingdom is all about developing the skills of freedom so that as the system collapses, we are capable of standing on our feet to withstand the pressure and the issues and concerns that come around such a collapse that affects water and food, that affects a, a community that could bring in civil unrest, if not civil war, and actual war. Um, it's so, like just as we have to practice playing the violin or something, mm -hmm. we've got to practice how to live freely, how to be free, yeah. both in our thinking and in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And the, the general views that what we have found, and this has been borne out by more than 2,000 intense debates we've had over many years since we started Love for Life in March 2005, um, where we put the test, using the test of scrutiny to argue and argue and find where the truth is and go where the truth takes us. It's not about that, um, that we are the ones with the answer or the remedy because it's not about following anybody here. It's simply uh, looking at the insights that provide an overall benefit that, that, that raises all of us up into a true paradise way of life where we all do have freedom, where we all do have joy and abundance and do no harm and most particularly no loss of uniqueness and originality mm. which is caused by um, education which we will talk about in this video because one of the critical factors of Kingdom is to stop the education that we've been giving, we were given and, and not pass it on to our children and to do it another way. There's another approach to doing this that helps children to develop these true freedom skills. So I think... But it uh, really is, if I can put in, it really is about what we're thinking because we most of, a lot of the time we just do not realize how it is our thinking and our attitude that creates kingdom and nothing else we can have all the land we want we can have all the whiz bang you know water tanks equipment everything we could want to be totally um, independent from the system but unless our thinking is free of the system then we're still slaves in the system because that's how we think just like today most of us think like slaves you know, we still, when you can see we do, because we still uh, um, run around fulfilling all our system obligations. If we were truly thinking as free men and women, we wouldn't do that. Yeah, we'll so, you know, the, the, the thinking is, and the attitude is critical, because if, if we cannot work on, our, on how we think and, and how we behave, then we're doing nothing different from before. If we want to change how we're living, we have to change how we're thinking. So, there's two things uh, in that. With Kingdom, it's all about full responsibility for everything we think, feel and do that determines our attitudes, our intent, our behavior. And then there's the system way of life where everything is limited responsibility, limited reliability, where we are so used to giving away our lives to others who are telling us how to think, feel and act, who provide us with the rules, regulations, rituals, procedures, conditions, contracts of a life that has become fake. It's not one that we've created uniquely from our direct experience with nature. It's one brought out by others who put these pictures in our heads that we are now using, or we're borrowing, as a fake version of who we think we are. Because that's what we build our these fake lives out of. So Kinnam is all about taking full responsibility. How does that work? It means we're no longer relying on a slave system to provide us with water, food, services, benefits, privileges exclusivity. 
It's no longer sitting around talking about freedom while we're still relying on the handouts of the system to give us what we want. Because that ain't freedom. That's a fake form of freedom. And it's a common fake form of freedom you'll find all through the internet when people talk about... it relies on money anyway. It relies on money. It relies on... It relate, well, in fact, the way that it works is that an explained, an explained consciousness, uh, an explained freedom, an explained truth, an explained God, or an explained anything, are just thoughts and ideas put in our heads, made up by others who are telling us how to think and feel about a consciousness, or about a God, or about our truth, or about our freedom. This is not our true freedom. This is not our unique consciousness. The, the unique consciousness that creates who we are comes out of our direct relationship with nature, which is the inspirations or those sensations that form from interacting with the, the life forms that we call trees and animals and creatures. And they inspire us to create our unique dreams, which are those thoughts that we think and feel that weaves the life of the real man that we are. This starts as children. But if you get to these children early enough and you start to hijack them and put them into an education system and you explain them that over there's a daffodil and it's yellow and give them a scientific explanation and that up there is Mars and it's a planet and Earth's a planet and we give them a whole system science world of explanation, give them a whole history of where we all came from and that we came out of the dark ages and we were squiggly things that came out of this big bang theory that evolved through Neanderthal man into this thing we now call a human and on it goes. All of this is fake and fraud, guys, because it's, it's all done in third party. There's no first party experience. So Kingdom is always a first party to first party direct experience. If you want to know the truth, you go directly to the source of the very thing that you are talking about or addressing and get it from them. Don't get it from someone else who's acting as a representative of that. In this case, the plant, there's a daffodil yellow. Because it's clear, the plant never told us it was a daffodil it was yellow and gave us a scientific explanation. That was made up by another man who's acting as an imposter of that life form, acting as a third party representative as first party. Yes, the information I'm sharing is coming from that plant we call the daffodils yellow and the scientific explanation that comes with it. Now the whole of our system education is this fraud. It's all fraud. So Kingdom is about stopping that. We have to stop that. The only way children can learn the truth is to give them the direct experience without us putting our ideas into their heads. Because when we do that, we're telling our children that they are not good enough to work it out in their unique original way. When you're holding a baby in your arms, and it's smiling at you. You're looking at the magnificence of man, built in with everything. And when we start explaining to, to our babies, to our children, we're telling them that they're not magnificent anymore, that they can't work it out, that they need us to intervene as intermeddlers, interceders, interlopers, third parties. We have to get at them and to start explaining everything to them, thinking that we are doing the right thing. In fact, this is how we destroy them. Because every time we explain and explain and explain and explain, which is what the life of being raised in the system is all about, we're telling them that they are not good enough, that they're not capable, meaning you must have doubt and uncertainty about who you are. You must have doubt and uncertainty about what you're part of. You must now be dependent on other people who will explain to you what life is to you, what you are all about. So your whole life has been created for you by somebody else, by many others. This is the slave system that we are addressing here because you cannot create a slave without brainwashing them in terms of an educated slave. In the old days it would have been straight overt slavery where uh, another tribe just came in, invaded the tribe, decimated the tribe or whatever they did and they had their garrisons, they, they had all their men in place to keep control of everyone, and everyone knew who their master was, everyone knew who was in charge. Now we have an, a, a covert system, which is done through this form of brain thought control, where really no one can pick their finger as to who is the one in power. So, what Kingdom is about is, is creating a mass exodus out of all of this, to depart this in this life, not in the next life, not waiting for someone else. We're saying, we are magnificent. We are capable of doing it now. We don't need messiahs and saviors and remedies and rescuers to come and fix it for us, because only slaves need that. This stuff only happens, all these kind of things only happen in the system, where all the storytelling of that kind of fairy tale brainwashing goes on. We're talking about taking the power into our own hands and be responsible. This doesn't mean that we are a cult or a sect, that we're following anyone. This is not about the fact that we're not capable. 
This is all about just saying no to harm. No to lies. No to fraud. Yes to do no harm. Yes to creation of paradise. And it starts with how we are thinking, feeling and acting. And that's the beauty of the Love for Life work that we have been creating all these years to make sense of this brainwashing system and the methods. Now the downside of um, not waiting for saviors, messiahs, etc. and rescuers is that it means we have to do all the hard work ourselves. Which is, <laughs> so, and I think that's a, a thing that puts a lot of people off, but it, it really is if we look at it in terms of if we've been living in a house for several years and we've done no cleaning, no tidying, nothing, the house is going to be an absolute tip. And basically, if we want to make the house nice again, we've got to set about putting in the hard work to clean it up, getting rid of all the junk, doing all the cleaning, washing the windows, washing the walls. Now we're in the same situation, and, and it is hard work. It's hard work until we get it finished and then we enjoy a nice tidy house again. But the kingdom's no different except it's on a sort of earth-wide scale. And what we need to do, we've all been responsible for creating all this mess that we're living in. Uh, now, where everywhere you go there's rubbish, there's pollution, there's mess, we're producing, you know, if you go to your local tip, the amount of rubbish being produced constantly, day in, day out, how many people are just dumping stuff, dumping stuff, dumping stuff. And so it's really about we've got a big clean-up job to do so yes it is going to be hard work and yes learning a new skill is hard work just as we can't learn the violin in five minutes if we want to learn to live freely which means we've got to grow our food we've got to learn how to manage water we've got to learn how to um, manage without you know making toilets in the ground or whatever so when the, if there's no sewerage we've we've got you know all these things and they're all skills so it's it really is a lot of hard work practice, and practice, that's practice. so you know not waiting for the savior waiting for the savior is a lot easier <laughs> or waiting for whatever system man or woman comes at us with a great remedy is an awful lot easier but that way you're never going to be free because it's always about someone else telling you what to do because you still haven't developed the skills that you need to be a free man or a free woman. So it's not easy, Kingdom. In, in, it's, it's a lot of hard work. In fact, imagine the Creator created Earth, if you're looking at it from a biblical sense, and created man and gave man Earth, and man destroyed Earth. Now this is no different to you lending your house to your friend while you go away and you come back and, you ha and your friend is, and, and the friends of your friend have uh, trashed the house. Could you trust them again with looking after your house after you have to go through all the trouble, fix it all up and clean up all the mess? Now obviously 99.9% of cases you're going to say no, we're all going to say no, unless that friend or friends can show to us that they're going to learn, they've learned from that and learn not to do it again. Now do you think that the Creator, the created Earth has given us this paradise where everyone's running around as newborn Christians or Muslims or whether it's Buddhists um, or Jews or whether we're Greek, doesn't matter whether it's race, culture, creed, um, careers, title, standings. We as consumers, we are all the consumers. While we're in the system, we're consuming, consuming, consuming paradise. We're consuming nature. We're relying on a dead world of dead things to produce more dead things and we're educating our children to be dead so they can continue being the consumers of a dead world. Do you think that this creator is going to let all of us back into the Creator's paradise in this afterlife that they call heaven after we completely trashed this earth. Can this Creator trust us? Now, which is an analogy. Obviously the Creator's not. So the issue is, there's no saviour because we've all got free will. You see, we're given free will, which means we're not puppets on a string. There's no one to turn to, to, to point the finger at someone else to say, hey, please rescue us. Because it ain't there. You have free will. Free will is absolute. It means absolute power. Full responsibility means absolute power, absolute control, absolute everything. There's no grey in it. The buck's, meaning the buck stops with us. We're the ones who've got to fix it. And if we don't fix it, that no one else is fixing it. And the world will, the earth will go the way it goes based on how we all think, feel and act. So if we want to continue trashing it, it will be trashed to the point that there is literally nothing left. Or it's, very like, it's like if someone's smoking and someone who cares about them can keep saying to them many, many times, you've got to stop smoking, you've got to stop smoking, you've got to stop smoking, you're killing yourself. But in the end, nothing will change until that man or woman just goes, you know what, 
I don't want to do that anymore. Because they have the free will. They have the free will to keep smoking, the free will to stop smoking. And it is only their thinking that will change whether they continue smoking or whether they stop smoking. That's all it is. It's a change in how they think. When they suddenly think, you know what, I don't want to do this to myself anymore. As opposed to thinking, well, I'm still smoking. That's the, um, that's the difference. And that's exactly the same. Either we decide to stop trashing Earth or we decide to continue trashing Earth. That's it. The system is a system of slavery. We, we, are, we, we as children become educated to become the slaves or the cogs in the wheels of that system progress of civilization, a slave status. And as slaves, we drag our children in. They must conform to become slaves too because the careers, the titles, the standings, their lifestyles, their values and interests in the system is that slavery, is that consumerism, is that harm that we support because we have to take trees down, take forests down, we have to dig the earth out, we have to do harm to rivers and oceans, we have to do harm to just about everything to provide us with the dead things um, that, that become the roads and the highways and the skyscrapers and the suburbs and the libraries and the books and the electronics and the technologies and the internet and the hotels and the pubs and the clubs and the lifestyles and the football stadiums and all the sports and the media and entertainment and it just goes on and on and on. All of it is harm. It is just a mass of harm and we are practiced. We're actually brilliant and skilled in the practice of supporting harm and having been harmed and having harm done to us, we accept that harm because we're all under limited responsibility, limited liability. We gave up who we really are. And that happened because we were got at so young because we were educated. We were told we're not good enough, we're not capable enough to create our unique dreams that forms the unique man in the life of the man we live amongst this living nature, this living paradise. This bastardization of, of nature being something that we should not worship is not about that. It's about, it's about the reverence, the sacredness of everything. Meaning that every grain of sand is sacred. Every, every particle of air and every drop of water is unique and original. There's not one the same as this next. There's no scientist that can find the same uniqueness. This beautiful little kale plant is that unique and original. It's unique and original. And we honor it as unique and original. And even though this, in this hot house, this hot house we've been building, we have to honour. So every child is unique and original, not one the same as the next. So we don't go and, uh, and desecrate that sacredness by brainwashing them to turn them into the cogs of the sameness wheels that, that turn in the system. Now you've got to watch out for the remedies because there's a thousand one remedies coming at us all now. But you look carefully at these remedies. It's the system under another guise because it's still under the power of our doubt and uncertainty to take responsibility for our lives. The true remedy is the one where we stand up and we take responsibility, each of us, and we come together through strength and no longer come together through the neediness, because it's the neediness of needing something to fix something that we are not capable of fixing is where everything goes wrong. This is why we go to hospitals, why we go to big pharmaceutical companies, why we go to supermarkets and why we go to fast food stores and why we go to the media and why we go to libraries and why we go to courses and careers. Because we don't think that we are capable of being the creator, creating the life of the man, the original man we are meant to be creating. We gave it all up. We sold out. So kingdom is a pathway that's a mass exodus out of this madness, out of this insanity in this life, here and now, amongst all brothers and sisters who want to come together to see life is a gift on a do no harm path, where we can create the abundance between us all and share that abundance without fighting and bickering over that abundance. We are already all on land. Nobody owns the land. There's nothing to own. Only the brainwashing teaches us to own. You can't own anything, guys. No one can own anything. We can't even own a last breath. <gasps> We don't let it go, we'll die. We can't even own our last drink or meal. If we don't let it go, we die. We're not meant to hold on. Same with belief system, because the whole system of education is these belief systems. And so we've got to learn to let go and learn to be, learn, learn to accept that we already have land. All we have to do is, is to be the participant in the creation of a living paradise of abundance. And if we all come together and work hard every day to create a living food forest, create an abundance of food, 
to protect the waters and to capture the water and to nurture the sacred water and make sure that every family comes to kingdom ends up with a hectare of land where they can live on that land and pass it on perpetuity forevermore to their children all the descendants to come where they can create their private dreams where they can dream without doing harm to their neighbors and to the forest where they are the caretakers and custodians and stewards of a do not harm way of life that honors the uniqueness of everything of paradise where every bird is revered where we don't hunt animals anymore we don't need to kill animals our bodies aren't built to hunt and eat uh, flesh and corpse animals in fact their proteins in our bodies are lethal to us where we don't have to believe anymore about you know who's got mine who's got yours and I look I worked this hard and I did this and you only worked harder so I want this and because that's my value and your value is different and so we start arguing over boxes of apples versus box of oranges that are coming out of our food for us we get past all this we just give we just give if you get 400 of us together all giving to each other we're flooded in abundance guys because no one's holding on we just saturate and that's nature for you nature doesn't hold on to its own seeds doesn't hold on to its own air it doesn't hold on to its own leaves it gives so that everything of the ecosystem benefits from the life of the tree and the life of the bird and the life of the insects and the life of everything that crawls up the bark of the trees and the life of all the organisms in the soils interact with the root systems and the mycelium fungus interacts within the soil and all the minerals and all the other living things that makes up the magnificence of creation as wholeness, it's W-H-O-L-E, whole, it's whole. Everything is whole. We have to become whole. The education system we've been given has shattered us. We're in a shattered reality. We're broken down. Now it's about Greek and Italian and Australian and Jew and you know rich and poor and tall and short and first and last and you know and, and who's got power and who doesn't and who's a judge and who's a police officer. We've got to get rid of all this guys. We don't need any of this. It only happens because we don't want to take the responsibility to be it. We should each be the policeman. We should each be the judge. We should each be the doctor and the nurse. It's built into us as babies. We've got it all. We just gave it up. And so we've got to reconnect, renavigate, use our senses to renavigate in nature and let nature fill us up with the truth about who we are without someone else hijacking us and we're under someone else's image power telling us about who they think we are and so we now believe in the idea of a God and we worship the idea of someone's God that's not God there's no direct experience of a living creator the living creator is in the air it's in the wind it's in the it's in the you know it's in the trees and the leaves it's in the apples and the, it's in everything that's alive and living the creators in the living and we have to be living to be that too we don't own it we're just the custodians to, to co-creating that and we gift it that's life. This is what kingdom is all about. Walking away from the insanity of a system that does harm, immense harm, where we're so broken down into these individuals in the shattered reality, where we're so shattered that, uh, I'm busy watching footy, while well, the next door neighbor's got six sheriffs and four cops in there uh, harassing a family because someone rang up and said that this family was um, abusing one of the child because the next door neighbor complained about some child was crying during the night. Right, and we, from our experience with Love for Life, we know of tens of thousands just here along the east coast of Australia, tens of thousands of innocent families being harmed by government agencies, by police, coming into these people's lives where they've never done any harm, where the children are taken from and put them into adoptions, and usually the people involved in it make profits, make money from this adoption, and then we look at the court systems. So. What we're saying, Kingdom is about taking back all this responsibility, that we don't need the police, we don't need the army, we don't need the government, we don't need any of it, because we are it, and it lives in us. And if harm does to you, it's been done to you, it means we come to protect you because harm shouldn't be done to you, because if, the, if someone's harming you, it means they're harming us, because we're all connected. It's no longer... The shadow reality, oh well, I'll just turn a blind eye, read it in the newspaper, watch the bombing in the Palestinians, watch what's happened to the Barrier Reef. We all uproar and go and do a, do a, go on the internet and we'll just do a protest on the internet or we'll do a, um, what do they call when you're appealing or you're, you're lobbying, you know. Guys, nothing stopped anything. If, you, if, if all these, any of these things were going to work, 
to bring a paradise uh, into our lives. You think by now through word of mouth, somewhere in all of these religions and philosophies and politics and the education would be given, somewhere in amongst all of this, there'd be a truth passed down through word of mouth for all the generations that so profound, so powerful, that we're all living in a paradise here and now. But as you can see, that ain't the case. We're not living in a paradise. We're living in a world of hell. So our articles and the work that we do and the insights, and maybe we get some time, we'll share it even in this video, is showing you why kingdom, why we must not do further harm, why we could recycle everything that's been used to destroy, to recreate living homes or homes that can be a transition. Because kingdom really is, through the mudroom, a transition. It's like when you're on a farm and you walk through mud and you've got gumboots on and, you, and you're in heavy rain and you come you walk under the veranda, which is common in a lot of Australian farms, and you don't want to bring all that mud all over you and dirt into you, so you, you walk into this mudroom area where you take off your boots, you take off your jackets, you take everything off and you strip right down to you pretty clean. You can have a basin there and you clean up a bit and it all gets left in the, in the mudroom. And then you walk in to the living home. The mudroom is like five acres in a kingdom where we learn how to live responsibly. How we learn to not live in fear and not, not, no longer ringing in reactions to trauma. How we learn not to pull away from each other even though we can argue with each other about views. That we, have, we feel safe enough that we can talk about anything. And no matter what we talk about, no matter how intense it even that those conversations may be, those debates, arguments may happen, that we don't have to break away from each other and pull each other apart. We actually we can come together even stronger because we feel safe in the environment that we can talk and share our real truths with each other and heal and heal and heal and heal. The, thing, the other thing that's very important about Kingdom, which we've been learning with younger people who've been staying with us, because it's helping us learn about our own damage, because there is no one that's coming out of the system that isn't damaged. We are all damaged. Right now, this man is still damaged. This woman is still damaged. We're not free of the damage of the harm that's been done to us. But that doesn't mean we're going to give up on the dream of Kingdom so that we can transition through this, this harm, this trauma, and heal it in a living paradise because we need to be in the light where there is no darkness we need to be in the paradise where there's no more stresses and mortgages and contracts and bills and all the obligations of the system hanging over our heads that creates such pressure amongst us that makes us feel selfish and greedy and we've got to think for my own family we've got to think for our own survival we haven't got time to think about anybody else so what I'm leading to here is that kingdom is about in spite of all the things going wrong, that we are greater than that, that we are more magnificent than that, that we are more powerful than that, and we actually can do something in this life, and we don't need someone else to hold our hand to lead us there, that we, each, each of us, bring us to kingdom. We come to kingdom with strength. We do not come together in kingdom through weakness, because it's only in weakness that you accept a Messiah, or a Saviour, or a Rescuer, or anything else. That means that we are less than a man. We are less than magnificent. That we're not capable. So kingdom is a form of shame upon all of us as well. The shame of how far we have fallen, of how far we've given up who we are. Now the people behind the system aren't going to just create paradise. These remedies which we're sharing here have been out since 2006. The Steps of Kingdom have been out on the NF 2006. Everyone talks about charities and supporting a world of freedom. None of these people have contacted us, want to take an interest in us, and share anything about us. Because the real truth is not for them. Because they've got to give you a fake truth, a fake consciousness, a fake way of life, where they still have power and control over all their slaves. Because that is what the system is all about. Watch out for all the systems. Look carefully. If there's another man-made system that needs to come in between us, in the form of money, or commerce, or barter, or a cashless way of life, you know it is engineered by the Freemasonic world. It's designed for man to continue being in a fallen state where we give up responsibility for the real man that we are. In a real kingdom, in a real remedy, we don't need anything, because we are it. We come. We are the gift of life. We, every, everywhere we go, we're empowering what we do with our thoughts, giving life to that. And that abundance grows. And it's shared by everyone else of that life because we don't own it. We just gift it. And that is the do no harm path that we follow, guys. 
So this is not universal in the terms of a cult or a sect that we follow Dinam Pal. It just simply is that let's recognize harm where harm is and learn to withdraw from that. So collectively, in wholeness, we protect and nurture each other from that harm coming upon us and our children anymore. Give us the freedom on the land where we each have a piece of land to care for. And you'll read, you'll read this in Kingdom where all the best pieces of land of a kingdom, which could be a thousand acres or five thousand acres or five hundred acres, all the best piece of land is for the whole of the community to enjoy. We who create the kingdom domains, each in kingdom being one hectare, is the worst parts. And we transform them back into living paradises. All the coastlines for all everyone to use. Everything is on coastlines, everyone vantage point, we take them down. Everything, everywhere, where there is an exclusivity privilege, we take it all down. No one has that right to have that standing to be better than someone else. All that is just given up. Then it just comes down to how do we work together? Because in Kingdom, it's about how do we work together to build each other's homes, to help build each other's gardens, to help create the freedom that the family needs, that your family needs, so you can live your life and know that all around you is not a threat to you and that all around you know that you're not a threat to them, to all of us. So that's what the mudroom is all about. How do we learn to live? How do we practice freedom? How do we practice it all day, every day? And it's all about bringing things back to a local level as well, which, I mean, local is a real buzzword now, but in actual fact, we're not really encouraged to make things right locally, which literally right means here and now around us, because there's no point in us reaching out to the poor starving children in Africa and what can we do about them when all around us is chaos and harm too. Yes, people might have a house and they might have food, but doesn't mean there's not chaos and constant harm happening around us. It's getting right back to so we're, the communities we're forming are dealing with everything at a local level, which means we deal with, if there's any issues between us, we get together, sort them out. And we, d and we make sure that the do no harm is all around us, and then gradually we can start spreading out the do no harm a little bit further and a little bit further, till one day the do no harm reaches the starving children in Africa, or the people in Africa have already started doing it anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, the, so the, kingdom, the kingdom dream is where we are the custodians, caretakers and stewards of all our brothers and sisters and of all of nature, where we learn to reconnect with nature uh, without the in third party intermeddlers, interceders of education coming in between us. That we allow our children to work together in their groups in, in, a, in a kingdom school, but not a school as we know it in the system. This is really, the real school really is nature itself. And to learn, for, let the children learn to reconnect, learn how to talk to the animals, let the animals learn to talk with them again. Well, mind you, they already are. Um, learning how to work with things. Because see, the more our children are bonding with nature, they would never want to harm the very thing that they're part of. Because when we're brought up by nature, when we, when we allow the inspirations of nature to become us, we are the tree, we are the bird, we are the worm, we are the ant, we are the wind, and we'd never want to harm anything and on sort of that note talking when Arthur's talking about you know the best bits of land are for all of us it's very much about as well we don't run off and find some beautiful pristine place and say here I'll start a kingdom if it's a place is already beautiful and pristine let's leave it and let's find the fields that have been damaged by agriculture and animal husbandry and let's turn those back into living exactly. kingdoms. let's revitalize the soil plant the trees create the gardens so they become the living food for us. Yeah, let's clean up all the mess we've all been responsible. Because mm -hmm. while we've been living in our city lives, we are the destroyers and wreckers of everything. You can't blame anyone else. While we were in that city, we did it. There's no point running off to some alternative community out in the remote areas or whatever to create a new kingdom. We need to transform the cities. We need to break it down and heal it. That's what makes a man. A man is not someone who runs away from those responsibilities, it's a man who fixes it. The reason why we're creating a kingdom here in the Southern Highlands is because we can reach six million people because we're only 70 minutes by car from the hub of Sydney and we're only about two hours from the hub of Canberra and about three hours from the hub of Newcastle. So the six million between Newcastle and down the south coast uh, of, 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 of um, down towards past Wollongong. So a kingdom is a living example of a way of life, uh, how to live without no system. Imagine no system, no money, no commerce, and just us. And that we raise each other up through the lives that are gift, because we're no longer self-centered. We're no longer isolated, shattered, pits of pieces who need a system to come in between us, because the, the void of our education, where all our doubt and uncertainty was brought into us as children, is the system. Because it's the system that explains to us how we should be, how we should think, how we should feel, who we are. 
that is the shattered reality. That is the that's the that's all the lines of the broken puzzle. Because we 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 all come from this wholeness, and we've been shattered through education, instruction, explanation. Yeah, a lot of us think, oh my God, but we've got to educate. We're going to have chaos. No, it's the other way around. The fact that we doubt it is creating the chaos. That's why we've never been able to leave chaos. Because it's the education that causes the chaos. It's the education that brainwashes a man to become a Christian and a Jew and a Greek and a Muslim and a, and a, and a big business corporation executive. It doesn't matter who we are in the system. We are the harm doers. We've got to break that presumption. We've got to get ourselves back to a living paradise where we know the steps where we stop this, where we stop it, meaning the buck stops with us. We are the ones responsible. There's no one, there's no one to wait for to fix this mess. So kingdom is to demonstrate that we can live together with no system. Now that breaks the presumption of the whole of the system. Because when people, imagine three, four, five hundred of us come together, which is what we live for. That's what we're asking you. Come to join with us, not to follow us. Let's get a living kingdom off the ground here in the Southern Highlands to be a living example of a kingdom that can be celebrated for all the men all across the whole of earth because when one of these is off the ground it's the end of the system as we know it guys because it means we no longer have any doubt or uncertainty that of that it's no longer going to be written off as utopia or something outside of the possibilities of our magnificence anymore it means that we are so magnificent that we created kingdom and it's mirrored in that magnificence of each of us who comes together so it's no longer about what's in it for me you don't go to kingdom about what's in it for me. If you come to kingdom about what's in it for me, you're in the system and you'll come in, destroy the system. So you'll bring the system with you. Our job as caretakers was to route that out. We will route that out. We will stop that. Because nobody comes to a kingdom thinking about what's in it for me. Because that means it's self-centered. It means it's some, they're expecting something from someone else. Oh, I've got this money. What am I going to get from you guys? Oh, I've got this. What am I going to get from you guys? Do you realize the conditions of that means we need a system? Because that means that whoever's thinking about what's in it for me, they need a system to protect what they claim that they own. Because it's in what they own that they argue about what they think is in it for them. But when you don't own anything anymore, when we no longer got anything, because there's no money. Nobody owns anything. It's the, the whole idea of land title deeds, it doesn't exist. There's no first party there. You can't talk to the land titles as a first party and say, oh, land titles are true, that you exist, that we're all separate from each other. That's a man-made construct. It was brainwashing. There's no money. All it's just bits and pieces of trees and nature and soil. They're given the idea of this thing called money. It's all Alice in Wonderland. I think we should quickly explain this again because we talk about this. Little Mary, you can... Touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see, little Mary. As you, I can touch, taste, feel, smell, hear, see Fiona as she can do with this man. Because see, the presence of life is present to Fiona. And the presence of life is present to this man. But while little Mary acts as Alice in Wonderland, and no matter how fantastic that act may be, even if she did it on stage in front of 10,000 people, and at the end of her act, at the end of her staged act, 10,000 people rose up and applauded for 20 minutes, it's still not proof of fact that Alice exists. You see, the presence of life is not present to Alice or to Wonderland. Only the presence of life is present to Alice. And so here is the first party and the third party, the thing between first party of full responsibility and third party limited responsibility. We cannot touch, taste, feel, smell, he's a Christian or Jew or God because it's this is in third party. This, the, the law is in third party. The languages, these ABC languages we've learned are in third party. We can't go and visit ABC123 or any construct or concept that comes out of them because they don't exist. Just the same as Alice in Wonderland. There's nothing there. All that is there is the living lost in the performance of a make-believe ABC123 and all the forming of those letters that form the sentence structures of the act of Alice in Wonderland. And that's the system for you guys. Because everyone who's lost in the storytelling of the system is in the Wonderland under the name of the world of explanation. Because we've all been given names. And we're lost in that. So this, the kingdom, again, is about recognizing this and walking away from it to stop living the lie, stop arguing for what does not exist. Like gravity does not exist as a first party. You can't go and visit gravity and hear it directly from the tongue of gravity. 
You can't get on here from quantum physics or physics. You can't get on here from Mars or Venus or solar systems or galaxies. You can't get on here from anything that's been explained to us under the name in the system because that is a world of explanation. It's in third party and it's all make believe. The judge, you can't go and visit a judge and hear it directly from the tongue of judge. You can only go and visit the man, Bruce, who acts as the judge. The same as little Mary. You can only go and visit little Mary while she, uh, to experience her performance of Alice. But never can we hear anything about Alice from Alice. This is how deep the brainwashing goes. Kingdom is the way, walking away from all of this. Stop brainwashing our children. Stop harming each other. This is a passion, guys. This is a living passion to stop harm. And it's really about, as well, coming back to what we actually can know from what we experience. So there's so many theories about, is this like this or is that like this? Is the earth flat? Is it round? Is it this? In many areas of life, but what we need to do really is to come back to what we can actually know through our senses here and now. And then gradually, as we learn more and more, and we learn to connect more and more with everything of nature, then we learn to... Um, yeah, we, know, expand, we, get, we expand we, it out. And we yeah. get the answers yeah. to some of these questions. Our but, consciousness is expanding out. Hmm. That's what's happening. Instead of our consciousness retracting, because the more we're educated, we're retracting and retracting and we're shrinking and shutting down, allowing our children to be raised by nature, their consciousness is expanding because as they connect with the tree, they are the tree, their consciousness is expanding because they are the tree. And as we expand and expand and expand it out, we are the whole of the dream of life because we embody the Creator in us. Which again is what, back, coming back to what we experience at a local level, you know, instead of the, turning on the TV and watching what's happening all around the world, we go out in the garden and experience what is happening around us here and now, right there and then, because that is something we're directly experiencing rather than relying on someone telling us something and reporting something about what's happening far away that we, we have no way of experiencing mm. unless at the moment we hop on an aeroplane and, mm. and go and find out for ourselves. So getting back to let's deal with what we actually know right now and the answers if we seek the answers to what's actually happens up in the if, if there's a universe how the solar system works if there is such a thing how the stars work we'll we will we'll find the answers to those things as, as we go along but the most important thing is get back to what we can actually do here and now which is planting the gardens working out how do we live you know just simple things can we get plastic bags out of our lives and plastic bottles so we stop contributing to that harm. How do we live, with, can we start learning how to live with electricity? So we minimize and minimize and minimize until one day we suddenly go, one day we go, you know what, yeah. we don't actually need it yeah. anymore. I'm not using what I was using because I've changed how I'm living. So it's really, this This is what, and, and we talk a lot about everything going wrong out there and all the problems of the system, and, but, and in a way, Kingdom's not about any of all of that. What we have found, it's important to look at all this and learn from it so we can recognize the harm when, it, when we see it. But really, that's not what the life is all about. Our lives should be or are about coming out, dealing with the nature, dealing with how we're living our everyday lives and how we can get the harm out of our lives in day to day. Because once we do that, we're creating paradise around us. It's taking back power. It's at a local level, as Phil was pointing out earlier. We work with where the power is. We don't give, see what happens when we accept this global situation, global, everything's become so much bigger than us. And so we're, we're easily manipulated into just giving up our power to something bigger than us that we call a government, or a one world government, or an army, or whatever, to deal with this global problem. And this is cleverly engineered by the Freemasons. This is brilliantly done, and it's intentionally done, guys. We've got to bring the power back to the local level where we have our power. Where, how far can my power go um, in my life that I'm living where I can use that power to do something amazing and magnificent with the life of the man that I am, that the life of the woman that she is. And that's what we work with. We work with our power, creating food, creating abundance, sharing that abundance, helping build, rebuilding lands, reclaiming destroyed forests, I'm mean, sorry, destroyed forests that now become dairy farms and, and pasteurized and agriculture uh, destroyed lands. Um, with, we've been using chemicals and poison, how we can restore everything. So this is, this is about bringing it back to a local level because we cannot, this is not a global, our problem is not a global problem because we are all local. Hmm. We all live locally and it's locally we're all going to fix it. So we've got to get a kingdom happening at a local level to become a living example that we don't need local councils, that we don't need state governments, that we do not get, need uh, Commonwealth governments and we don't need United Nations and NATO and we don't need the European Union. We don't need any of this rubbish. 
It is rubbish. Because it has no relevance to who we are. It's all make-believe. None of it exists, guys. And it all does immense harm, even just in terms of, you know, the amount of paper used, the amount of buildings needed, the amount of... It's crazy when you look at what happens in, in, in law courts and things every day. It's, you know, mountains of paperwork going on, which is lots and lots of trees. And, and the same with all local level councils and everything. It's just, you know, the, the harm is everywhere. It's, 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 a, it's a lot of harm. See, at a local level, the way what we've been learning is that we, we've, 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 we've been doing it now for nearly six years. Not always successfully, but we're doing the best we can considering our compromised situations to become raw food eaters. Meaning, we're learning to create the food and eat it directly from the garden without cooking it, processing, manipulating it. Learning how to accept the consciousness of the plant directly into our body without altering it to something else that it isn't. Because when we go to nature and we change it from its original purpose, we're actually doing harm, we're creating a distortion. And that distortion becomes us because we are the ones who set these things into motion. And what we set into motion through belief, faith and associated opinion, what we think and feel and act on, we, it becomes us. So the reason raw food is so important in the kingdom and why we're going to learn to walk away from cooked food and processed foods is to retrain our bodies to learn to live without electricity learning to live without gas, learning to live without heating and air conditioning, but even more powerful than that, we actually change the weather. If we're clear with our intent, we alter the weather. We change the climate, because we are the creators, guys. The power is with each of us. It's a responsibility that we create. So this is not just going in every day, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to learn how to live with cold. We've been doing it for seven years already. We've been living without heating. And the youngest one's running around used to winter now. She doesn't even know what winter is anymore, really, because she still runs around bare feet and shorts and a, a, and a zero degree, sometimes even minus two or three. She's running around with just shorts and bare feet and a t-shirt. Doesn't know what it is. Doesn't get sick. So Kingdom is about the magnificence without the doubt and uncertainty getting in the way that means, oh my God, we need drugs. We need chemicals. We need heating. We need this advice about the mineral supplements and that kind of diet and, and this kind of thing. It's about learning what is it going to take to be a man fully responsible for everything. So we don't need third parties, electricity. We don't need the, uh, the electri uh, all the byproducts of refrigeration and all that. That we can actually learn to, to be smart and we use the natural warmth to dehydrate our food. How we learn to heal all sickness and disease, which raw food will do, especially when you have happy, bright thoughts. So, you know, well, that's important to say. Raw food alone will not heal all sickness and disease because yeah. a lot of sickness and disease is in our head. So What's raw, the food, raw food can do an immense amount to help your bodies heal. But if you keep the, the thoughts going that keep you sick, then you're not going, it's, not a, it's not a healing. See, now it's about your children, and that your children are our responsibility, just as our children are your responsibility. And that we, have, that we don't come in to invalidate the uniqueness, the sacredness of each child. That we honour, and we are the custodians to protect the community that we are part of. And so any harm done to anyone in the community is harm done to us. And we rise up as that community of that love. We all come together to say no. If anyone from the system, if there was 400 or 500 of us together, because we're going to need a lot of us, guys. We need to have, it's not the fear, it's simply we need to be big and strong enough and loud enough and, and noisy enough through, through celebration, through video and music and through uh, whether we do festivals while we're creating kingdom, while we're building the kingdom of life and do this as the, the true coming of man, that we don't need the system anymore, that we do not need sheriffs. When the sheriffs turn up, there's 500 of us that turn up or 1,000 of us. Every time. Every time. So then, if this is all down in the open, all out in the open on the internet while we have the chance to still use the internet, if they want to then come and invade a community, because see, now we're no longer about race, culture, creed. We're not, see, a kingdom is all about no drugs, no alcohol, no big pharmaceutical drugs, 
no cults, no sex, no leaders, no sheeple, no one to follow, no guns, non-violent, no weapons. It's, it's all about routing out every possible error of our lives which could be used against people like us to make out the accusation that we are a cult or a sect, or that we are possibly violent. We, we must follow a do not harm path, because to get out of this mess, we must live that do not harm path and provide no shield that is a religion or a cult or any kind of rubbish belief system for these people to use to hide behind to then attack us with. Because when we're conscious, those manipulators that might into, integrate into, in, that come into these groups that are intelligence agents, they stand out like an eyesore. Because all they can do is start to attack someone else's character. They, start, they attack someone else's color of their skin, or by the way they dress, or the way they look, or the way they smell, or the way they talk. We've got to get past all these personality cults, because Kingdom is not about worshipping any personality cult, because all personality cults are shaped by the belief systems of the brainwashing we've all been endured. And there are many examples that you can find in our work. We'll put a few links up here. So I guess we've given you a very good picture. The only thing that we can say to end this is that we are going to revisit the Steps of Kingdom that we wrote in 2006-2007, and we're going to update it. We're also going to create a bullet point as in terms of what is acceptable behavior in the Love of Kingdom group, so that people know exactly what it is to behave like that, only because there's people out who want to use and abuse and manipulate and alter and undermine and sabotage good people, bring down groups of good people down from inside and wreck it from inside. So we're going to set it in place that no one can come in and run a routine to attack another man's character. So you know when you are a member of of, of the kingdom group that we're all part of, it's about we all live for a do no harm path, we all live for no system, that we all live to stop all forms of harm in every area of our lives and learn to be responsible for our lives and that we are magnificent and we don't need anyone else to tell us anymore that we're not. Because when someone attacks you, they're telling you you're not good enough. When someone tries to pick on someone, they're trying to say you're still not magnificent, you're not good enough. We've got to be smart on that, guys. We've got to come together. So when we work as groups, we've got to route out all this, no matter where it comes from, and we keep growing to bring everyone else in. Draw all of us into this thing. Because we're all man, all of the dream of life, all of us are sacred, all of us are unique and original. And we need to bring this kingdoms back. The kin of man, the tribes of man, because we all came from tribes. All the best, everyone. I look forward to meeting you all, and all those who come to visit us and get involved. Come troopers, wherever you may be. So 
Oh, my God. 